What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Good morning. Hi. Hey, guys. Great, what's going on? It's a great day to have a Chief Chat, right? Yes. Good to be back. Yes. Every day is a good day to have a Chief Chat. And that's literally the case this week. So. I know. <laughs> it, is. It, is. it is. Good thing we like it. Yeah, I know. Exactly. You're not wrong. <laughs> so uh, we got a very, very special guest today who is a, a fellow airman uh, of mine uh, and also has been dedicated to a life of serving in and out of the uniform. Uh, without further ado, Julie, please introduce today's guest. Oh, Chief, we are so excited to have our guest with us today. He has a 20-year legacy of dedication to our nation, serving in the Air Force, where he deployed in support of Operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm and Southern Watch. He earned numerous awards and decorations while serving in the Air Force, and he continues to make a difference to this day to our nation's veterans who fought overseas. He was recently elected VFW National Commander. Please help me welcome Hal Rose. Hey, hey pleasure how, to be here. How, yeah, yeah. Pleasure to be here. Woo. Awesome. Oh, wow. thanks so much for taking time out to join us. We appreciate you. And for everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. If you have any questions for Hal, we'll read those live throughout the broadcast. So you can leave those in the comment section too. Uh, now's a good time to start your watch party and enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not following us, you should. We have Chief Chats lined up all fall, and you'll know who's coming up next. Hal, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I can tell you, you know, from personal experience, um, I, I didn't know much about the VFW. All I knew is they were always close to, to post or close to the base, and they had a, a freaking amazing happy hour and some and some fire karaoke. <laughs> So, so, so I'm excited to, uh, for you to give us some more knowledge and more information on the VFW. But uh, before we get started, uh, where are you calling us from today? Well, actually, I've got a few days. I'm at, I'm at home uh, here in Hampton, Virginia, outside Langley Air Force Base. Oh, Langley Air Force Base. Been there before. <laughs> yeah, I got here in 96. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. So you truly call in at home then. That's, that's. And there are a few years. That's great. That's good that you're able to, you know, have one place. I mean, I'm sure in your career, you were multiple places. So yeah, I, so, uh, I did. I did my bit of traveling. So speaking, so speaking of your career, can you tell us a little bit about your time in the Air Force and what led you to a life of military service? Sure. Um, well, my uh, both my mom and my dad uh, were both Air Force. Uh, oh, my, wow. Uh, my dad was a CADMS instructor. Um, in fact, he, uh, he even shot on the Air Force All-World Team. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, and, wow. uh, and my mom was admin. Wow. Uh, up until the time that, uh, uh, fortunately for me, that uh, she got pregnant at that time. And it was like, okay, you're out. And there I was. So I was raised <laughs> in an Air Force, <laughs> Air Force environment. So I always wanted to join the Air Force. Um, so I... Uh, I, uh, at that time, was living in uh, Florida, uh, which is where I really grew up, and uh, I joined and uh, spent uh, my first 14 years as a F-16 avionics uh, technician, um, going through uh, the ranks to uh, tech sergeant, and then had an opportunity um, to come to Langley as the uh, ACCIG inspector. Um, you know, everybody knows uh, that's in the Air Force, um, you know, the, the two biggest lies is we're glad to see you and we're here to help. <laughs> but uh, I did that for three years and then I moved over to at that time DR with, in the uh, F-35 program. Did my 20, had some disagreements where my next base was, had just got married. Um, she was established. I didn't want to have to pull up roots, so I retired. Wow. Thank you for your service, definitely. Uh, I was uh, yeah. It was a lifelong goal, completed, uh, and an absolute honor to do it. Excellent. So Hal, uh, yes, like Chief said, thank you for your service. And then can you tell us about the VFW? Um, you know, many people have heard of it, but can you share with our viewers today, what's your mission, 
who do you serve? And then what resources do you offer? Sure. Um, that could take us probably to the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'll try to give you the cliff notes uh, uh, on it. Um, you know, there, there, there is a, a, a stereotype, if you will, that, uh, you know, the VFW is the uh, cold beers, dark, smoky bars, telling war stories. I mean, in some places that, that's, that is true. Um, the reality is only about a third of our post even have a canteen, as we call them, or a bar. Um, but our, our main goal, um, our mission uh, for 121 years now, um, we, were, we started in uh, 1899. Um, is to help uh, veterans uh, and their families. Um, 13 guys in uh, Columbus, Ohio, sat down, uh, uh, said 121 years ago, and realized that as the military men at that time were coming out of the service, uh, the government's uh, idea of taking care of them was giving them 15 bucks and telling the families they had to take care of them, um, whether they were missing limbs or malaria, or whatever. Um, Three different areas formed and they eventually merged in uh, uh, 1913 to form today's VFW. Uh, we, we carry the banner for all veterans, um, not just the ones that belong to our organization. Um, there's, there's nothing except for maybe some membership um, uh, benefits as far as some of the companies we deal with to give a discount um, that comes with being a member um, separate of the fact that every person we signed up makes our voice one voice louder when we're sitting before Congress. Um, and uh, as far as our mission is, is to continue that, we have some of the best service officers. Those are the individuals that um, if somebody's transitioning out of the service or already out of the service or family members of maybe someone who's sick or deceased to help them get the benefits they need. Um, last year, I'm, I'm absolutely uh, proud to say that our service officers uh, in 2019 uh, recouped uh, $19 billion. That's with a B. Wow. Wow. Um, for veterans uh, compensation and disabilities um, just in that year. Oh, congratulations. Uh, wow. What an accomplishment. Yeah, it's uh, our, our service officers are trained uh, way above pretty much double the standard uh, that's out there. Mm -hmm. Our track record is is great and we're available around most all installations. Yeah, no, I, I remember a VFW, I think when I was in Herbert Field, uh, when I was stationed down in Herbert Field, Florida, um, the VFW helped sponsor some uh, some award ceremonies and, and other things. And I, I don't think a lot of folks probably know that, that, that they can you know, reach out to the VFW and, and get some sponsorship and they'll help you out on, on some of your events and all that good stuff. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. One of our, one of our biggest programs that we have is uh, adopt a unit um, where we encourage our local VFW posts to adopt a unit that's, that's on their local uh, installation uh, and try to interact with them. We get caught up sometimes um, with the local JAG interpretation uh, of what an outside agency can do on base. Um, mm -hmm. But as I had the uh, wing commander tell me one time, uh, I love my Jag. He keeps me out of trouble every day, but he doesn't make policy. He only gives yeah. guidance. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so uh, we, we, we encourage that. We do a lot of recognition with uh, Airman NCO, Senior NCO Officer of the Year um, awards, wing awards. Um, so feel free to reach out to your local, local VFWs. We, we encourage our members uh, to participate. Unfortunately, in today's environment, a lot of time they have to be invited to do it. Exactly. Um, but they're, they're there standing by ready to help out. Awesome. Awesome. So you did mention about benefits of a uh, VFW membership. Can you kind of expound on that? And uh, can you let the folks know how to, how to join? How can people join? Sure. Um, well, the, the, probably our biggest benefit that we have is, is within our local post. And that's the camaraderie that comes with it. Um, I will tell you somebody who's been retired now uh, for several years. Um, <laughs> the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, going on, going on 20 years now, um, uh, actually closer to 30 years now. Um, the, uh, uh, the camaraderie that you, when you leave the service is gone, it becomes that you're in that dog eat dog world out there. Um, 
so the the fellowship, if you will, the camaraderie you get by belonging to the organization um, is just phenomenal. Um, and of course, you get all the benefits everybody else gets. You may go to the front of the line, I guess, because you're sitting there with the individuals. Um, but we have a lot of in a lot of companies, um, as do a lot of organizations, that because of our affiliation uh, with the VFW, they give you a 10% discount here, 10% discount there. From a bigger standpoint, that's open to all. Um, all the veterans is, uh, you know, our legislative and our veteran service are probably our two biggest, but as, as important as that is our community involvement. Uh, we run a scholarship program for junior high and high school. Um, mm -hmm. Junior high is a written essay. They get a $5,000 um, a bond and a $30,000 scholarship oh, wow. for a verbal essay. Um, for our high school. And you don't have to be affiliated with the VFW. It's open to every, every child in the community, even homeschooled. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, uh, again, with our, with our uh, adopted unit um, that we have, our teacher recognition, uh, first responders uh, recognition programs. Uh, we have a lot of that. It, it's easy to join uh, for a, a shameless plug here. It's uh, you know vfw.org forward slash join um, or simply call one eight 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 join vfw and or I, pop into your local post and they'd be more than happy to sign you up. Absolutely. So Hal, you were elected the 112th National Commander this summer at VFW's headquarters in Kansas City, which we can see in the background there behind you. So 2020, mm -hmm. it has been such a tough year so far. How has the pandemic affected the VFW and um, veterans, in your opinion? Um, twofold from an organizational standpoint, uh, we were never set up within the organization to handle a pandemic or alien invasion. Um, so, so it, it was a, a lot of learning on the fly and a lot of the rules, if you will, the bylaws of the organization prohibited us from doing a lot of stuff. So we had to, as my senior vice says, uh, stretch that rubber band um, to allow electronic meetings, for instance. Yep. Um, we weren't allowed to do that. And, and thank goodness the, the commander before me, Doc Schmidt, Unfortunately, he ended his year in this. And so he had started the ground, the, 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 the groundwork for this, and then we just picked it up. We have since had our first uh, uh, council of administration, which is basically our board of directors, um, completely virtual meeting. Um, we had the, my installation, uh, an installation speech uh, virtually from headquarters. Uh, our legislative training uh, was all virtual. We've had several training um, meetings. We've embraced it now. Um, we're actually in the process of, of rewriting that. What worries me and the organization the most is because of this pandemic, these veterans that did use their local VFWs as their place for camaraderie and fellowship have now been cut off and they're sitting at home alone. Um, early on, they were watching Life Savings Tank when the market was going down. Um, that's a recipe for disaster. Um, and um, we tend to follow pretty closely with military and a lot of the surveys and stuff that goes out and some of the recent surveys as far as suicide goes um, is showing a, a spike in, during this uh, pandemic time. So we're in an effort now to reach out to our post to have them reach out to their members to make contact with them. Um, you know, it may just take a phone call to, to let somebody know that they are still needed and appreciated. And that's, that's what we're working on now. That's our biggest concern is that isolation that's a, that's affecting our members. Yes, yes, check, you gotta check on them, definitely. Mm -hmm. Buddy checks. Mm -hmm. And Hal, so you, um, you kind of alluded to this, you've been involved with VFW for nearly 30 years. So what called you to give back in this way? And then um, you've talked a lot about VFW, but do you have any specific goals that you guys are working on for this year? Sure. I. Um, it's, uh, when I joined the organization, I had, it was literally the day I got back from Desert Storm, uh, received a phone call in Sumter, South Carolina <laughs> at Shaw Air Force Base. And, uh, it was a charity that was working out of the local VFW, wanting to send some needy kids to the circus. 
and uh, I had 10 months in the desert and a pocket full of money. Uh, <laughs> so, so I was like, sure, you know, I'll give you a hundred bucks. And uh, they said, we'll send somebody by the house next week. And I said, well, you know, Florida, everything in Florida is free to us vets coming back. I'm taking some time off. Where are you at? I'll bring you the money. And uh, they swore at the VFW. I said, what and where is that? <laughs> uh, so he told me I went in, um, actually uh, walked into uh, the canteen area, and there was my boss, my flight chief. Uh, oh, wow. There, <laughs> who, who I, just, I just spent 10, 10, 10 and a half months in the desert with him. He never once mentioned the organization. Um, <laughs> So the, uh, the local he, quartermaster, Mel Emore, um, he pulled me aside once I got there and we talked a little bit and he, he didn't sell me on the local post. He didn't sell me on, um, the, the happy hour prices or anything. He sold me on the organization by what we do for all the veterans. And I knew right then and there, I wanted to be part of it. And, um, three weeks later I came back and I was sworn in as a member. By the end of the meeting, I was their junior vice commander. Uh, <laughs> it tends to happen in some posts trying to find somebody to fill the the shoes in those positions um but but that's how i got involved and i've been involved ever since because one person took the time uh to explain to me what the organization does and how important it is uh, that one person made a heck of a difference in my life um you know and that's what i asked my members and and everybody really in life you know Find that one person mentor, make a difference in somebody's life and have them pay it forward. Um, and so that's part of the mission uh, within the, the organization. Um, my, my biggest stress right now, uh, uh, it, or uh, I guess I should say is the part I'm stressing the most right now is this is an organization that is open to all, repeat, all combat veterans. If you qualify for this organization, we want you in, um, regardless of your um, age, your race, your religion, sexual orientation, any of that. You served, you qualify, we want you in. No questions. Awesome. So I can speak on, you know, I was a flight chief at some point in my life, and uh, he, I'm sure he, he didn't want to tell you his hiding spot. That's why <laughs> you, you found his hiding spot. So, I mean, most of, <laughs> Most of my area, like, yeah, let, let me not tell them where I'm going so I can, uh, yeah, but that's, that's cool though. Uh, can, can you talk to us a little bit about the 2020 vision for veterans? Uh, what's your mission there? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, every year the incoming commander comes up uh, with a slogan. Um, and so uh, working with my team, uh, which is all of this, we call them departments because we have the Department of Europe and Pacific. We have VFW posts all over the world. Um, so all of the department commanders uh, got together when we were all junior vices, and then we go through the chairs together. And uh, I said, we need, a, we need a good slogan as a team. So we went around the room and it, uh, it kind of boiled down, Chief, to it's 2020. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's try to incorporate that. So we came up with the 2020 vision for veterans. Well, I mean, I, I don't know if you knew what 2020 was going to bring. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> well, you just not this slow. <laughs> you know, it, I, 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 I get the same comments on, um, on our scholarship uh, program for, for the high school kids. The commander in chief always picks the theme and uh, you have to pick the theme at the end of the year prior. So in December of last year, I picked the theme for this year um, for them to give their speech about. Um, and I picked, is this the country the founders envisioned? <laughs> <laughs> Who would have known? Yeah, I uh, know. <laughs> but, you know, um, yeah, maybe I had the premonition. I, I sure didn't have a crystal ball. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I do have to give a shout out to my team out there. They they call themselves Hal's Heroes. Uh, so to all oh, the department wow. commanders out there, you know, keep rocking it. We're doing a good job under extraordinary circumstances. Awesome. Absolutely. So Hal, earlier this year, the exchange was honored to provide a new 
benefit to veterans. So all veterans with service connected disabilities were welcomed back to their exchange with in store shopping privileges. In your view, how has the new benefit been received in the veteran community? Uh, it it uh, fantastic. Uh, it it my opinion was was overdue. I'm I'm glad. Um, as I tell all my, my thinking outside the box, somebody said, "How do we make this better?" Um, it's a win win. I think it's a it's a win for the veterans who were excluded. It's a win for AFES with more customers. Absolutely. Um, and and they deserve that right. Uh, I know a lot of them in our uh, conventions and our get-togethers were real excited about that. Um, of course, now we're being, you know, uh, rightfully so, kind of restricted to when we can and can't get in there um, based on the pandemic, but it's going to pass. The veil of virus, as I call it, um, eventually will be lifted. Um, nobody knows what the normal is going to look like, but it's going to be better than it is now. Mm -hmm. Good deal. And Hal, so last year, the exchange, we were honored to be part of your annual convention in Orlando. It was a terrific event, um, and we love being able to talk directly with our nation's heroes. So how are you guys continuing your outreach during a time of the physical distancing? Well, you know, the um, certain areas of the country posts are, are pretty much allowed to operate as normal. Um, and uh, so we still provide that safe haven. Uh, for veterans to come to um, and uh, and have that fellowship. Uh, some of our states are, are still pretty much locked everybody down. We're kind of a unique area that we're not a bar. We're not a restaurant. Uh, we're a nonprofit, but there's no place to, to put us uh, in their proclamations and executive orders. So they tend to lump us with, with other organizations, uh, i.e. bars and restaurants. Uh, social media is probably our biggest key right now. A lot of Zoom meetings, um, which is having some unexpected um, benefits. Uh, we literally have people now that are stationed overseas that are getting the email going, I, I didn't think I'd be at another post meeting. And here I am from Germany, uh, <laughs> zooming into uh, to, to Virginia. Um, so that part of it is, is a big one. Old fashioned uh, uh, phone calls. Are, are a big push that we're doing, you know, not just calling them once, but calling them often. Um, and anybody they need to, to join, um, we have posts that are doing, uh, um, you know, coffee with the commanders, happy hour with the post, uh, that type stuff. Oh, that's great, great, great. Um, great way to have that outreach during the uh, pandemic. So uh, we understand you recently had met with the SEAC uh, Ramon Colon Lopez, who was a guest on on Chiefs Chat before, so I could throw that plug out there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> about about how VFW supports active duty service members. Can you tell us about that conversation and what, what would you share with the CAC? Sure. Um, by the way, heck of a nice guy. Very focused on on the the members. Absolutely. Um, he is he is absolutely about the individuals and and their quality of life and what's being asked uh, about them. And that was the gist of our, our meeting um, with him was how we can integrate the VFW with the military, the, uh, the BOD, what we can do for them, what they can do for us. Um, obviously from our standpoint, we can, we can show up and do burger burns and we can help them when they transition out. Um, we have uh, one of our biggest, uh, two biggest programs we have with the military our unmet needs program, uh, which those in the Air Force, it's, you know, we have the uh, Air Force Aid uh, Society that can help them out. Some downfalls of that is if, if you have to use it prior to getting out, it's, it's, if it's a loan, you gotta pay it off where you get out. Um, we do basically the same thing with a grant. Oh, okay. Um, so we get calls all the time. We have a, a, an airman, a soldier, uh, you know, Marine seamen that are de deployed um, the hot water heater goes out. They call their local VFW. Usually within three or four days, we got a new one installed for them free of charge. Oh man! That's um, in our program, we have to thank Burger King. They partnered with us um, to make that program uh, possible. Our our members donate. Um, some of the franchisees in Burger King. Um, our other one that we do is um, our Help of Heroes 
scholarship program, which is directly for active duty military, um, E5 is below, um, and they can get $5,000 a semester and apply multiple times. And we have sport clips, uh, hair uh, stylists, uh, salons to thank for that. Um, Gordon Logan, uh, the CEO is a, is a, a C-130 pilot. Uh, in a previous life, he, he started uh, sport clips, uh, teamed with us. And uh, uh, I, I think we've done um, almost $8 million in scholarships now for active duty E-5s and below. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I know recently um, the Air Force reduced their tuition assistance from 100% to 75%. And and it, it got a little flack, at, you know, I'm, you know, I feel like they're taking benefits, but I'm glad you're sharing that information because there's other ways of, of getting get, getting benefits from different organizations to kind of supplement that need. So we appreciate the VFW for, uh, for doing that for our service members. Yeah, one of the things we're really trying to do as I travel around the country um, is to try to get a, a meeting with the wing leadership uh, or the post leadership uh, to let them know what we can provide uh, to, to the troops that are out there. Um, it isn't just a smoky bar with cold beer telling war stories. Um, we're an asset and, and uh, that's what we pride ourselves on is uh, to be able to help the veterans, their families and the communities uh, that we live around. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Information is just, it's, it's so powerful. So just, just knowing where to go and, and who to talk to, uh, it, that, that solves most of the problem in the world. So. Yeah. BFW.org. Another plug. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and you had mentioned it was 888-JOIN-BFW for the phone number as well, which that's a pretty catchy phone number. It's hard to forget. So that is. <laughs> good, good job. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I've, I've I've seen that on the infomercial like at two in the morning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I'm, unfortunately, the uh, Super Bowl ads are just a little too expensive for us. <laughs> Hal, we wanted to take some time to share some feedback with you that we're getting on our live feed. We have people watching from all over the world. Amanda is tuning in from Lackland. She says, thank you for your service, Hal. Michelle Laforte, she says, thank you for your service. She is watching this morning from Arizona. Um, I know Robin says that she loves Chief Chat and she never, she says, hi team. And um, it's always good to keep up with what's going on on the show. Um, she's always on the lookout for him. Let's see what else. Um, so I, there's a question out here from, her name is Amanda May. She says, I have a question about the legislative actions with VFW, what kinds of policies have been influenced and made better because of VFW involvement? I feel like this is paramount for passing along to younger generations of service members so we can continue to protect our veterans, their families, and their benefits. That's a great question, Michelle, uh, Amanda. Um, I'll turn it over to Hal and let him answer that one. Absolutely. Um, you know, we've been, we've been um, forefront of legislative, um, veterans legislative uh, uh, for again, 100, 121 years. Some of our biggest accomplishments that is, it's already being taken for granted was the VFW was instrumental in establishing the VA system. Uh, you know, we predate the VA, um, the GI Bill, then the forever GI Bill. Um, it took uh, 10 years of legislation to finally get that pushed through. And, and don't get me wrong, it wasn't that it was strictly the VFW, it was VSOs, but we led the charge uh, on those. Uh, one of our, our um, latest accomplishments uh, was the, uh, the DIC um, offset. That if you're not familiar with that for our, for our surviving uh, spouses, uh, the individual in the military gets their survivor benefit, uh, which they pay for even in retirement. Mm -hmm. um, the law was if you if a spouse received the survivor benefit and from the VA um, dependent indemnity care, one would offset the other, even though they were two separate benefits to them. Uh, we just last year got that passed, or actually this year got that passed for a three year phase in that they will now get their full benefits uh, of each. And, and, and that brings me to a, to a great point is 
you know, it was the veterans before us that that paved the way with all this legislation to make it better for the veterans that are in there today. So so now the 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 charge now is what are the veterans today going to do for their sons and daughters uh, coming down the road? And that's where the membership in in VSO and and the VFW uh, is so important. So we can continue that. Uh, we're only one of three organizations um, that get a standalone uh, testimony in front of Congress. It's us, the Legion, and the DAV uh, in March. Every, every year, we have the Senate, Congress, and we go over what's important for our veterans on a standalone one-on-one -on -one answer their questions. Well, that's powerful and a, and a chance to really make a difference. Uh, absolutely. It's what we do every day. We actually have an office in D.C. Um, and mm -hmm. I say D.C., if you look at the Supreme Court building, caddy corner to the left on the back corner is our office. So you guys are right there in there uh, <laughs> fighting for veterans and their families. That's terrific, Hal. Yeah, we, we, we testify, um, you know, over 100 times a year on different issues that we get called in for. Fantastic. Thanks for sharing that <laughs> and doing that to take care of veterans. So Hal, we have really enjoyed our chat with you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, before we go, remind us again, where can veterans go to find out more about VFW and the resources available to them? VFW.org. VFW.org <laughs> and 888-JOIN-VFW to join um, and then the forward slash join. Uh, I would, if I could, have just one minute to say, you know, thanks to everybody that, that does the hard work in, in AFIS. I mean, you know, in, in the middle of the pandemic, you didn't miss a beat. You still, you still kept the stores open. You still kept the warehouses running, um, you know, from, from a veteran standpoint. Um, and I'm sure for active duty and everybody else, thank you. Uh, you don't get enough of it. You're frontline workers uh, and, and our hats are off to you. Oh, thank you okay. so much. It's um, our honor to to stand ready to protect the force, especially during this challenging time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, nothing, nothing is better when you're in the middle of the desert and all of a sudden you see the AFIS trailer open. <laughs> oh, man. That's like, that's like going to the club. You know, <laughs> it, is, it is a wonderful thing. So, so speaking uh, of going to the club. I wanted to, I want to just ask one thing. We were talking about this um, before we oh, went gosh. live, but we were talking about, <laughs> you mentioned karaoke and I just would like Hal and you chief to share what your go-to karaoke songs are. Hal, what's your go-to? Oh, <laughs> she called you out. Man. Uh, well, those, those that have ever heard me attempt to sing will appreciate this. My two are Wipeout and Tequila. <laughs> Very lyric heavy, those songs. Yes. Very lyric heavy on the lyrics. And um, what about you, Chief? So, Uh-oh. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and mine really is, might get kicked out. Mine is uh, <laughs> it, it's Purple, Purple Rain because it doesn't have that many lyrics. I can do the air guitar and I can get a lighter and I can go back and forth and bam, that's Purple Rain all day long. <laughs> oh, Chief, I can't wait to hear you. you okay, what about Purple you? Rain. Julie, me? what about you? So I am a big fan of The Gambler by Kenny Rogers. That's kind of me and my sisters. That's kind of our go-to. And Leah, what about you? Well, if I have to choose, I guess I'll say Garth Brooks, Friends in Low Places. Friends you are just but I'm not much of a side. karaoke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, much of a <laughs> yeah. yeah we'll take I that. promise you don't want to hear me <laughs> sing. <laughs> Same. Most people don't want to hear me talk, let alone sing. So. You can always join me with tequila. <laughs> I think that will be our new go-to, Hal. We're going to take a page from your book. So thank you. For <laughs> well, well, Hal, thank you so much, man. We're going we to keep going with this one, but uh, thank you so much for joining us. A uh, big shout out to May out there uh, for asking that great question. Uh, May and I were stationed at, in San Antonio together, uh, and she's been oh. a super huge supporter of, of me my whole career. I'm a super huge supporter of her, so uh, thanks so much for that. And everybody tuning in. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. Uh, how, man, BFW, there, there's a, a lot of information, like you said, before I came in, before we had this this, this talk, even, you know, coming up the ranks, uh, I just didn't know what the BFW offered uh, besides, you know, like you said, cold beer and war stories. Uh, mm -hmm. But you, you guys are so much more than that. So we appreciate you for what you do. Uh, thank you to your staff. Thank you to your, your teammates. 
uh, your house heroes. Thank you to house heroes out there in the yes. world uh, for, for taking care of us. Uh, this means so much to the airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, Coasties, and that now even Space Force personnel. Um, wish you all the best and uh, thank you for taking care of our veterans. Thanks, Chief. All right. If you could hang on for a second, uh, you know, after the live, uh, I had to get some information from you. Sure. Thanks, awesome. y'all. All right. Chief, shout out. Bye. Bye. Chief, shout out. All right.